What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Anthony's Takes. It looks like Kid Calm is back with another sad Kevin Feige. He's titled this one The Sequel, where if you remember the one where uh, Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal announced that Venom, the Venom spin off movie, will be within the MCU of Marvel. So, um, you know. The Hello Darkness, My Old Friend, that song um, playing in the background. Now, it looks like they had another interview where they go into more depth of uh, talking about it. So let's see what he's cooked up this time. I'm going to begin, uh, guys, by asking, I mean, how did the, the Sony and the kind of MCU come to be involved in this <laughs> together? And who made the first move? He did. <laughs> uh, we had lunch in Amy's uh, beautiful office and talking about the future of Spider-Man. And I said, how about... We do it together. He did. And um, at first I thought, I, I don't know <laughs> how I do this or how we can do this. And how dare you? Stop it. Get some help. And what? then I thought, oh my God, this would be fantastic. This is the only way to do it. Because the truth is, is that... He saved your we, ass. We worked with Kevin on the first couple of movies because he worked with Avi and he worked at Marvel at that time. He worked at Marvel that whole time. And... Um, in the later years, when he was really busy becoming himself, um, he would, you know, read scripts and help. But he, hello um, darkness, I wanted well. to him, you know, and I wanted, I wanted his real brain on this because there is nobody better at it. Because it's quite rare, isn't it, to see studios collaborate like this, and also free if you involve uh, Disney as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you see this happening more often from this point onwards? No. Probably not. I think it really <laughs> takes. I think it takes somebody like Amy to say this is the best thing for the character. And Amy, and and because you know damn well you could say this about other characters all the time. Right but Amy loves the first Spider-Man. Why the fuck you lying? <laughs> yes, she, she probably loves this Spider-Man. She really does, and that's how this worked. Yeah. Because it was it was what was going to be best for this character yeah. that we all love. And, and the truth is, is that you don't usually say this about corporations, and it is really rare. But for Disney. For Marvel and for Sony, the best Spider-Man is the most is the most economically economically is the thing that they need too. She and, needs to and shut the if fuck the up. movie is great and the character is restored to his place as he should be, um, uh, it's good for everyone. And everyone saw that that making something really good was actually made economic sense. Because but what do you think Spider-Man's future holds? Now, sort of beyond the Infinity War and Homecoming, obviously we've got the the sequel. Can you see him appearing in in more and more films? Obviously we've got Venom and Silver and Black as well. And right. they're sort of not in the MCU as such, but can we see him? Well, they are tangential because because they take place in the world that this Spider-Man lives in. What the fuck are you talking about? They take place in the world that this Spider-Man lives in. What? <laughs> She's contradicting herself. What the fuck is going on? But um, as far as I'm concerned, I hope we keep making movies with Marvel and keeping Spider-Man where he belongs. So it might be same in Venom and Silver and Black. Frank. Don't know. <laughs> the box. The box. Pascal to say, uh, how dare you? Okay, Kevin Feige came into your office and you're telling me that you were skeptical about doing it, about saving your own ass. You failed with Spider Man 3 with Tobey Maguire, you failed with both sequels, well, you failed with the reboot. The Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2. And so, Kevin Feige comes to you and telling you, okay, basically saying that, okay, you failed at what you did. Can we have Spider-Man back to redeem him? And so far, his appearance in Civil War was amazing. His Homecoming movie perfectly fitting title called Homecoming because he, he belongs with Marvel and for her to fucking say that you know 
how dare he try to, you know, come in my office and try to take Spider-Man back, but because she's just looking at Spider-Man as a fucking cash cow. And because of how they mishandled, just because of how Sony mishandled the rights to Spider-Man, it's just, you know, ugh. It just makes me sick that, you know, Marvel, in order to get the character in movies that he deserves to be in, has to work with these fucking idiots that, you know, don't care about the material that they're making money off of. They're just fucking making these movies just to make them. And, um, but yeah, you should be, you know, sucking off Kevin Feige because he, he's making you a lot of money by taking his own character back that belongs to Marvel and doing the damn movie the right way. And so far, it's been amazing. Uh, I saw Homecoming, and uh, I wasn't disappointed at all. Um, there wasn't one one aspect of the movie. You know, there's a couple of things that I had a couple issues with, but like, you know, it's so far been a whole lot damn better than what Amy Pascal was able to get deliver us uh, Spider-Man fans. So, yeah. For her to just keep saying the word economically. <laughs> yeah, you can tell she gives no fucks about the character of Spider-Man and just cares about making that money for Sony. So, let me know what you guys think. Uh, you guys like Homecoming? I know I did. Um, I haven't come across somebody who said they didn't like Homecoming after seeing it and definitely thinks it was better than what anything Sony has done. I mean, Sony, yeah, they they did okay with the first and the second um, Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire and Willem Dafoe and, um, oh, what's that guy's name who plays Dr. Octopus? I can't remember right now. But, um, yeah, Spider-Man 2 definitely being their best work, their best movie. But then Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was just... It was good for what it was at the time, but <clears throat> when you uh, felt the need to reboot Spider-Man after Spider-Man three uh, too soon, it just it just didn't. And then you make the same mistake you did with Spider-Man three. You do the same damn thing a couple of years later, <laughs> and fuck up Amazing Spider-Man 2 by making it too cluttered with villains, too too crammed with all kinds of different, like, characters and uh, storylines intermingling with each other. It was just a disaster. So, if you enjoyed my video, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. Um, yeah. Sooner or later, I hope Marvel gets everything back from Sony and no longer have to work with Sony. I mean, but I know Amy Pascal, she's going to, you know, fight to her death to keep the rights of Spider-Man under um, Sony contracts and everything like that. Just so, because if they lose Spider-Man, they, I mean, what else do they have? I honestly can't think of anything. Sony, you know. They're making money off of, you know, Marvel saving their asses and pretty much returning Spider-Man to what he should be. You know, not what they made him out to be. So, if you like my video, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. If you did not, eat a dick. <laughs>